Here's the twisting machine that I've made, completely out of just angle iron and uh, pipe. Here you see I've screwed a pipe flange onto a pipe. This pipe slides through a larger pipe, so that acts as my bearing surface to pivot on right. I come back here to another flange. And the reason I use flanges like this is so that I could build tooling like this. I have various toolings right now, 5 8 but I have them from quarter all the way up to one inch that I can bolt in place. The center is open so the rod can pass through. Uh, and then I have a flange back here that I can put my handle to. Now, uh, this handle is nice and okay, but I would prefer a whole wheel around it. Of course, I have another machine in the works a much better machine that includes bearings and everything in here but uh, this gets me by. this has gotten me by for a lot of years on a lot of big projects um, does a fine job there's a this is a stop here I can loosen up this bolt right here and slide this rod in and out and that creates a stop so when I slide my bar in it stops right where I want it to stop at for the beginning of my twist um, see, I've marked when I get it full the way around. I've marked which direction. I've marked which direction to turn in this particular case, and I do that in I do that in chalk so that I can change it for whatever operation I'm doing. Maybe I've got to go a one and a half turns or something like that. But you can see there's set screws in here, keeping those things from untwisting on those pipes once they were threaded onto pipes. Some of them I've welded. Some of them because I want to be able to take it. A, well, these I. This end I welded, this end I have set screws because of course I had to assemble it, I had to put it together and then assemble it. And I need to be able to disassemble it should I want to change anything. The base is two uh, angle irons made as ways. I have a one inch bars going down through there so there's a one inch gap. And now the tailstock is uh, these one inch, the, these angle iron ways. I put clamps on it to when I want to stop where, where I want the twist to be. I wanted to twist that long. And uh, here's my tailstock, and it's got a 5 8 screw. And like I said, I have several different tailstocks here to put in place uh, for whatever size material. In it. You have to make this tailstock be able to slide either hinge back and fall away or slide out of the way. Otherwise, once you put your bar in here and twist it, you're trapped. So this has to be easily moved. Be careful, that gets very hot. And if you have Kevlar gloves like mine with a hole in them, you learn that real fast. That gets very hot. So here, let me show you underneath how this works as well. You see, I have a bolt there. If I want to bolt it in steady, but that, I found that didn't work. But I still have it so it doesn't accidentally fall out on me when I back the bar up and then it's on the floor and then, then I'm picking that up off the floor. So, so I just slide it up there. It's kind of warm right now still because I just finished that. I use uh, just clamps or vice grips to get my stop so my stop can change whatever. You could make a little stoppers that move, but keep it simple. Uh, there's the uh, 
there's the headpiece and it bolts in place. You see it just bolts in place. There's the tailpiece. It goes down through. See? And there's the headpiece. And that just pivots. And here's the tail stock with the adjustable stop. And right now it's inside there, stopping the bar at the length that I want it. So that's it. Keep it simple. But it does a fabulous job.